Welcome to Hope Today. You know, we are believing for a great day for you because Jesus promises us a future and a hope, and we believe that that's the hope that you can have today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman and Amy Schaefer. Guys, it is a great day to hope in the Lord. Yes, and we are so excited that you are taking a little bit of your day, a little bit of your time to join with us because we love to encourage you. We love to bring you inspiration. And you know, we just want to sprinkle joy wherever you are today because that's what we love to do. <laughs> sprinkle joy today could be the best day of your life. I believe it. And if you'll just wake up every day and expect God to do something really cool like Tom, didn't you do uh, something cool today? You know, I woke up today only with one thing on my mind, kill yellow jackets in my <laughs> yard. I was weed whacking around the, the shrubs of, uh, the other over the weekend. And all of a sudden I felt burning pain in my ankle and in my no. arm and I hit, a, I hit a yellow jacket nest. You know, <gasps> yellow jackets, they're not it's like, horrible. they don't, if, if you just look at them cross-eyed, they sting you, you know? So uh, anyway, uh, went out there today i had two cans and you know it's like this you, they're down and the, yeah they're down underneath you know so i'm like i gotcha you know so anyway if you have yellow jackets in your yard call amy <laughs> great we're in trouble uh, well anyway we have a verse for you today it's not about yellow jackets so we we love to start off the program every day with a verse and 1 Peter 4.10 says this, Each of you has been blessed with one of God's many wonderful gifts to be used in the service of others. So use your gift well. I have to ask you guys, what, what, are you, what do you think your gift is? Oh, that's a big question to ask. So I think I have a gift of encouragement. I love encouraging yeah. people when they're down and just loving on people. So that's, I think that's my big gift, a big gift of encouragement and just speaking life into people when they are in desperate situations, if they're brokenhearted. That's like one of my favorite things to do more than anything else is when somebody is hurting and you just can connect with them and love on them. Oh, it's the greatest feeling ever. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I'm a, to my core, a cheerleader which we would call an encourager. You yeah. know, I was talking, you know, with some friends and just saying how, how there's like this, I'm a pro person, like pro, pro, pro. And then there's anti, anti, anti people. And I like to, to be pro everything, <laughs> pro people, pro Bible, pro life, pro you're going to make it, pro God is so good, you know? And I just think that that's a, a gift given. I, that is definitely a gift. That's a gift. It's a gift you want to be around a lot of times. Is the 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 pro? I I'm a wasp killer. That's my no. I'm just. Uh, <laughs> we all have a gift, though. We all have something that that we should use for the benefit of others. Well, and that's the key. That that gift won't be activated until we're using it to serve God's people well. So take what God has given you, the gifts, the quirkiness. The, the, whatever you're passionate about and use it to touch God's people. That, that is so true. You know, if you're struggling today or you think that you uh, need that encouragement, maybe you need that, that thing that says God is for you, not against you. You know, right. so call the prayer line, get a hold of a prayer partner. They'll give you encouragement today too. The number's there on your screen. You know, guys, before we go on, we, we really want to mention an important news story. The Abraham Accords were signed. Uh, yesterday and uh you know i was i was it's it's a significant thing you know between the united arab emirates uh, an arab nation mm -hmm. and israel and uh, president trump was there and uh you, you 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 know i was just looking at him today this morning and it's things like we the undersigned recognize the importance of maintaining and strengthening peace in the middle east well if you start right there yeah. that's a good place to be mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i mean benjamin netanyahu was just mm -hmm. going on about how how they've been praying for this for like decades and years and then to to be alive and to be watching it all happen right now i'm just saying get in the bible read what's happening in biblical prophecy and understand the times that we're living in and don't be ignorant there's things that are being set up right now and we're literally watching prophecy come to pass. Yeah, it's really important time for all of us to keep our eyes on Jesus because there's so many things unfolding. And you know, one thing that is really unfolding today is Hurricane Sally is coming. I just want to share with you. So my husband and I, I mean, I was talking to my husband yesterday. He's actually in the Gulf Coast. It's my mother-in-law's birthday today. And he was on the beach yesterday and it was the craziest thing. He was on the beach, you see the sun. And then on the other side, you saw this big, dark, ominous cloud. So there's, you know, we definitely got to keep, you know, our friends down there in Central mm -hmm. Florida, all of Florida in prayer, especially yeah 
because Hurricane Sally actually made landfall this morning as a category two storm in Alabama. Now forecasters say because Sally's slow movement, it's bringing prolonged impacts to the Gulf Coast. Now in parts of Alabama and the western panhandle of Florida, there's fears there could be life threatening storm surges along with historic flooding and damaging winds. And I just think it's a moment we just need to pray and just believe like let yes. that storm like pass, let it like weaken in the name of Jesus. And we just pray right now for Alabama. We pray, Father God, for Mississippi. We pray right now for Florida, Father God. And I just pray that you would supernaturally just move the storm out of the path. I pray that you would weaken it, Father God, and it would just dissipate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Amen. another thing what we want to tell you about is something's really interesting that's happening with the world's largest Baptist denomination. It's taking a step to distance itself from its racist past and racial unrest. Southern Baptists are being encouraged to use the alternative name Great Commission Baptist. I really like that. The denomination's president, J.D. Greer, says the new name has been drawing a lot of attention in recent weeks. Now it's also going to be the focus of the denomination's annual meeting next year, which is themed We Are Great Commission Baptist. So, Tom, and Amy, I want to hear your thoughts on Great Commission Baptist. Anything that has to do with the Great Commission, I'm in favor of. If, if it's about making disciples of all uh, people, of all nations, which is what God has called us to, I'm in favor of that. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, love the Great Commission. Obviously, that's what we are born for. That's what we're to do. Um, but also, I think denominationalism is kind of dying down, and it's just time to be the church. It's time to be the light. It's time to love Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and do what he's called us to do. And I, I really think that those days of getting really hung up on denominationalism. <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> <exactly. laughs> Denominationalism. Denomin yeah, Denominationalism. yeah it, getting <laughs> caught up in that is, is kind of, is kind of a, a gone thing. Well, there's, you know, I've worked with so many different churches. Uh, pe uh, 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 people have called, I used to call the prayer line and say, well, I was hurt by the church. And I say, really? I've been really blessed by the church. I've been blessed by so yes. many different Amen. types of churches and, and so many different um, expressions of the body of Christ uh, that I've worked with. It is a powerful thing when we've come together in unity like that. And I think now more than ever with everything that's happening in our nation where we do have to come together because yeah. I think, you know, one thing I've heard my French was sharing with me that the enemy, if you look in the Greek, one of his name is if you break it down, it's about separation. So he's about dividing yeah, us. Right. He's about, yeah. you know, breaking us apart. But now more than ever, we need to rise up the Ecclesia as the body of Christ to come together. And we need to share the Great Commission because it's so wonderful. We need to go into our neighborhoods. We need to go and share the good news of Jesus because people have questions like never before and living in fear, but we know our hope is in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. <laughs> Man, if we could get back to unity, remember the song, we are the world, yeah. we are the children, <laughs> we, are, we are the ones that make the world a better place. And our world needs good leadership. And if there is ever going to be unity and peace, we need people like our next guest to lead by demonstrating how we can serve others and lead like Christ. Luke Negron has taken servant leadership to heart and is running as a congressional candidate in PA 18. Luke, welcome to Hope Today. Hello, Amy. Hey, folks. Thanks so much for having me here today. Man, tell us about, you know, tell us about yourself and kind of your age and, and what you've been up to. <laughs> That's the big one, right? Yeah. So I guess going back in, in history to what I've been up to and why I'm here at all is uh, I was eight years old when 9-11 happened, and we just recognized the 19th anniversary of that. That was really my waking up moment when I went from just being a child to being a child who was aware of the fact that, that leadership matters and who was aware of competing world religions and, and different factions that affect our everyday life. These are things that woke me up at the age of eight years old, and it became my passion, social and political leadership and influence specifically to other young people throughout high school, throughout my studies at Grove City College, uh, working with groups like Samaritan's Purse, the Pittsburgh Project, the Mentor Project, to build up those of us who have had less opportunity in life. And then through the, uh, my time with the United States Air Force and now into Congress because I think that it's a time when we need leaders who understand what we go through today. And from a spiritual perspective, I think that we need leaders who are fit, willing to, to stand on the truth of Christ today. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can come together bipartisan and actually accomplish great things for our country? 
You know what? I really think there is. And I think that actually Western PA and the Pittsburgh region is a really great example of that. You have a lot of very um, bipartisan individuals who may be registered R or D one way or the other, but really functionally in their everyday life, they're hardworking individuals who want to provide for their family and want to enjoy freedom. And then from a spiritual side of that, these are people who we can talk to because they want to be reached. They want to have open conversation. They welcome uh, ideas like equality and free speech. Mm -hmm. These are things that we all value for the most part. And as Americans, we can bring that together and, and we need to refine our national sense of unity, I think. Right now we see a lot of hate, a lot of vitriol going around. I think that moving past that, past the partisan politics and into a place of viewing each other as American brothers and sisters and being Christians leading that charge, that's a powerful message that I think we can bring today. You know, Luke, you just touched upon something, one of the biggest issues that's facing our nation right now with all the unrest that's happening. And I saw that you come from a blended background of different things. So I just want to hear what's your take on, you know, everything that's happening and what, you know, because you're going into politics, what do you plan to do? What do we need to do, especially in the government to see this, you know, unity happen? Yeah, you know what, that's, that's a really good point. And I think it, it speaks to a truth of politics today. And it's this. Politics in the past, uh, in the 50s and 60s, uh, the, the politics of old used to be a little bit easier to sanitize and thus to keep out of church and out of our personal lives because they were kind of removed. It was kind of re relegated to tax codes and international military policy and things like this. They certainly have a moral aspect to them, but politics today are very much about identity, about uh, sexual identity, about uh, religion, about uh, the issue of life, uh, right? Will you stand for life or will you allow uh, abortion to, to keep claiming the lives of our infants? These are things that are very uh, intimate and personal. And then, of course, we get to, to identity from a race and ethnic standpoint. So uh, I think, again, what we need to focus on here is that those, uh, those topics, uh, specifically race and ethnicity, they're less important than the fact that we are all Americans. There's a great quote by Theodore Roosevelt, who's one of my historical mentors. And his, uh, he also ha is a mutt like me. He's mixed. And, um, and his, his cousins are all saying, I'm 30% I'm this, 30% Irish, you know, whatever. And Theodore says, it doesn't matter, I'm 100% American. That type of an attitude is what we need more of today. Luke, let me ask you about uh, your faith. Let me ask you about that, because you know, that is informing your decisions and it is creating in you the character of Christ. Uh, how did you come to faith and, and what, what have you done to develop? I mean, you're 27 and you're going into this incredible, uh, or hoping to go into this incredible uh, you know, uh, place of our nation where so much character is needed. How has that been developed in you? Yeah, so I was blessed to be born into a family of Christ followers. Uh, I'm one of five children and both of my parents found Christ uh, in their 20s, so before I was born. However, they always made something very clear to me, which I would encourage every listener to embrace, which is that nobody else can save you. Your parents can't save you, your brothers and sisters, your best friend, they can't make that decision for you. It's great for them to be an influence on you, but your, your relationship with Christ is your relationship with Christ, not theirs. Um, and so that's something that I had to embrace as I grew up. And through high school, I was quite confident in my faith, but I tell a lot of people, I, I think I was actually missing out on some of the relationship. I, I, it was more knowledge-based and less personal for me. And then I went through some things actually in college that had me considering um, a difficult life and a, a sudden death. What, what, if, what if I faced a really difficult life or what if I went to bed and didn't wake up the next morning? Am I confident in the God that I plan to meet on the next side? And, uh, and the answer for me at that time was, was no, I, I don't feel like I, I feel like I know of him, but I don't feel like I know him as personally as I'd want to if he's the next face that I see. And so, um, so finding the reasons behind my faith, uh, finding the historical grounding behind why I believe what I believe, and then building my relationship with Christ through prayer and uh, through the great community and the body of Christ, so the community of believers was, was absolutely uh, intrinsic for me. You know, faith um, is a really big deal for me when I am going to the ballots to vote. 
How important is the evangelical vote? How important is it for us as believers to realize that we need to get out and vote? Why is it important and why do we need to do it? It's amazingly important. And uh, so from the evan evangelical vote standpoint, right, we have about 60% of this country which identifies as Christian. So what that means is that if all evangelicals decided on something, they could make it happen because all you need is 51% for a majority vote, right? So, so that gives you a, a numbers perspective. But then on top of that, what I kind of hit on earlier is that um, I, I see some Christians saying, well, I don't want to get too political. And my question about that is always, what do you mean by political? Let's rewind and define our terms a little bit here, because um, there are some uh, some topics today that are called quote unquote political, but we're talking about life. We're talking about life versus abortion. We're talking about identity. We're talking about the definition of marriage. These things are called political today, but where would we be in the 1800s if people had looked at slavery and said, you know what, slavery, I hate it, but it's too political. The church shouldn't get involved. No, there are times when you need to get involved, especially when we start getting into issues that are ethical and uh, about our identity and our spiritual identity, our moral identity as Christians. Uh, so that's why I think we should be involved today. We should be outspoken. We should be speaking to our neighbors in truth and love, as the Bible says. You know, Luke, I just love what you're just talking about, you know, why it's so important for us to get out and vote. And one thing that I think is so fascinating, interesting, you're 27 years old, right? That's right. So you're a millennial. So it's why, is it, why do you say, like, what would you say is so important for the next generation to really get involved in politics? Because right now we see a huge movement that is even happening in our country. Yeah, that's right. So one of the, the things about this movement that really excites me, which I think you're alluding to, is that there is a major ten, uh, trend now to accept and desire young leaders and Washington outsiders. And I think this is great. Whether or not I agree with someone on everything, I'm excited to see young people stepping up to the plate and to see uh, outsiders saying, you know what, we've had enough of these people who have been here for decades, it's time for some new ideas. Let's have new competition of ideas. So I think that's that's a beautiful thing that we can see. And for my generation, and then Gen Z, who is ridiculously energized, like I thought millennials were, and then I look at Gen Z and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are outpacing us by a mile. Um, but the, the importance there is number one, so that we can take responsibility. Because uh, I think millennials and Gen Z, we love to complain about the baby, baby boomers. And we love to point the finger and say, hey, they failed us. And some of that may or may not have merit. But then what about us? Uh, like millennials are between, what, 24 and 35 right now? What are we doing? We're adults now. Uh, when are we going to step up and kind of claim our own destiny, claim our, our own responsibility here? And Gen Z is right on our heels, right? So if we step up to the plate and we take our own responsibility, we start taking some leadership roles, then we have a, a right to, to voice our opinions. I think until then, uh, it, it's kind of just uh, us, us whining about things that we've done nothing about. I don't know, as soon as you mentioned baby boomers, my face pops up on the screen. So I don't know, Luke, what's, what's going on here. Uh, but the, the producer me, said, go, go, cut. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you, you mentioned Theodore Roosevelt. Who other, uh, what other people, uh, either historically or people that you knew, were mentors uh, who affected your, you know, your base, your beliefs? Uh, who, who were influences on you? Yeah, so I'll give you a, a few political ones, right? Theodore Roosevelt, uh, I really like him because of his attitude. Uh, he was called the bull moose. He, he, he was um, a man of the people. He was known to even uh, box and wrestle individuals while he was a sitting president. Like, can you imagine if we had Donald Trump and Barack Obama like welcoming people into the White House to come have sparring sessions? How cool is that? That's what this guy did. Um, he also, I'm biased because Theodore Roosevelt entered office, I believe, at the age of 20, perhaps 22, and young leaders really inspire me, as did Alexander Hamilton. Uh, George Washington is a fantastic leader. Uh, his dedication to God and to the country that he founded, um, sacrificing his sword back to Congress after winning the Revolutionary War is, is exemplary. Um, and then in a modern sense, uh, I know we spoke actually before the show a little bit about uh, people like Ravi Zacharias, uh, Michael Ramsden, Nabil Qureshi, uh, two of whom have sadly passed. And, and these are people who, when I was in what I'd call kind of my, my dark night of the soul, really, uh, exploring uh, who is God and why do I believe what I believe, these are men who, who played a part in, in really, I would say, saving my life when I was 
depressed and when I felt alone. These are people who, who shined light into my life through their studies, through their teachings. Uh, so those are just some people who, who come to mind. Luke, how can we find out about your, uh, your, your website, your social media, and how can we pray for you? Yeah, so the website is my last name, Negron, and then 2020.com. So N-E-G-R-O-N 2020.com. And all of my social media is linked there. If you scroll to the bottom or if you're on a smartphone, I believe it'll be off on the sidebar. Uh, you'll see Twitter, Instagram, Facebook logos. Just click on those and it'll link you as a central point there. Um, and and as far as praying for me, the, the two big things that I, I pray for daily and that I ask for prayer for are uh, wisdom, because I believe that God honors prayers for wisdom. He says uh, in the Bible, right, that, that wisdom uh, cries out in the streets and, and wisdom seeks to be desired by men. You know, all you need to do is ask that of God. And I believe that's an amazing gift to have. And humility, humility is something that does not come, come naturally to the heart of man. And I am no exception to that. So wisdom and humility, uh, things that I, I think all of our leaders can benefit from. So I, I'd encourage you to be, pray for that for me but also to pray for that for leaders, whether you agree or disagree with them, Republican, Democrat, I don't care. If they have wisdom and humility, we're getting a step in the right direction. So those are two things that, that I think would be really uh, effective. That's incredible, Luke. And we are also going to link your information to our website at ctvn.org. Luke, thank you for your heart, your passion to run for Congress. And Thank you for that beautiful prayer that we're going to pray for you of humility and wisdom. And we just pray that you will be bold and courageous as you step into this adventure. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. We'll be right back after this break. Every day is a gift. The days of 2020 have been challenging, but God promises a future full of hope. A new year begins this month on the Jewish calendar, so we're celebrating new beginnings by offering a unique 16-month Christian Jewish calendar for your best gift. Whether it's a new day or a new year, it's time to embrace the good things God has for you in this season. Not only will this Blessings from Israel calendar inspire you with beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, but it will build your faith with promises from Scripture that add strength and blessing to each day. It even contains resources for Torah study and celebration of holy days. Cornerstone TV is offering it for your best gift by request only. Call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org. Ask for the Blessings from Israel calendar when you give and we'll get it to you right away. Thank you for partnering with Cornerstone Television. On tomorrow's Hope Today, supporting families in crisis. HGTV host and pro-life voice Victoria Robinson shares how we can defend the innocent and protect the unborn. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Since the earliest beginnings of Cornerstone Television, here in Pittsburgh, we have supported missions. And uh, I, I just am so appreciative of the history of that uh, with uh, Russ and Norma, our founders, uh, wanting to support ministries beyond ourselves and around the world. And one of the ones that we do uh, is uh, Chris and Laura Dacus, and they minister in Albania. They have something uh, called the Stephen Center where they not only uh, do ministry, but they have a restaurant where they've actually trained Albanians in, in, uh, in how to set up a business. It's just a, a wonderful ministry. They also minister to, to uh, uh, refugees that are passing through that area. So we have this uh, short video from Chris who's gonna give us an update. Hello, Cornerstone family. Laura and I are here in Chesapeake, Virginia, waiting to get back to Albania. We returned in March for our granddaughter's wedding and uh, ended up being isolated here up till now. We're hoping to get back by mid-October and uh, start up our ministry again. We have been uh, running the Stevens Center from a distance. The coronavirus required us to stop serving at the restaurant on the in, inside. However, we are still doing outside and deliveries. So that's keeping us, keeping our employees employed and uh, the ministry operating in Albania. The Stevenson has also in the past done work with the 
with the um, disabled children. However, due to the pandemic, we can't continue that at this time, but we're looking forward to restarting it. In Thessaloniki, Greece, we're still operating the refugee centers and we're working with uh, camps, Iranians and Syrian men and families. Uh, they're working at the Vajia Kori camp. And uh, this is a photo of uh, the refugee center for uh, men and how we're doing uh, work for uh, a ministry there. We're looking forward to ministering with Cornerstone again when we are able to travel. And we're thanking you for all the diligent support and prayers you've been giving Cornerstone. It benefits also other ministries like ours. God bless you. We love the work that's happening there. You know, Tom and Amy, something that God just even put in my spirit as I was just like watching and listening to Chris just share that is that, you know, there's so many refugees here even in our country. And I just think about how we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. You know, there's so many neighborhoods in Pittsburgh and Florida, all over the, you know, our nation, where we can really right now love on people like never before, because really people need to know who Jesus is. <laughs> uh, Using the gifts that we have to help serve others. Yeah. Isn't that the scripture we talked about today? Wherever you're at, wherever God's called you, just make a difference. Do something for somebody else. Use what you have to help people. Yeah. You know, one of uh, another ministry we support, YWAM Pittsburgh, uh, has been ministering uh, among refugees in this, right in, uh, right here, right in, here in oh. Pittsburgh, uh, making a difference and seeing them come to the Lord, whereas if they were still in their own nation, probably would not have heard the gospel. Yeah, well, we've only got about a minute left and we want to pray for you. <laughs> we want to pray for your requests that yes. have come in. And, uh, you know, we just, we just believe that God has um, a, a plan and a purpose for everything you're going through. Amy, yes. just have a minute left. We pray. Let's pray. We love to pray for you, Father. We just ask right now that for, we pray for all of our friends, our family, our partners, our brothers and sisters in Christ, that, Father, that you would bless them, that, Father, there would be an open a heaven above them. Father, that you, you're prospering their businesses, that you're healing their bodies, that you're taking care of their kids and, and all of their business. Father, we just give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Peace Amen. in the homes. Amen. Sydney, any takeaways from today's program? Just serve others and love others well. That's the one thing is like we can all do something. You know, a lot of times I know, Tom, you talk about sometimes we're so in focus, but we need to be out focused and we need to shine the light of Christ wherever we are. So go shine, 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 shine. That's right. We need to be great commission Christians, right? Yeah. And you know, as you do that, we're believing that you are going to find God's hope today too. Have a great one in Him.